Hey guys, it's Aaron and Bryce, and we're excited to be here talking to you today about another Fusion 360 update. And it's only January, so I'd say 2016 is off to a good start. Yeah, I can't believe it's only the first update of the year. And we're going to bring some great enhancements to the, all of the workspaces in Fusion 360. I'm truly really excited about the collaboration yeah. in this first update, though. Yeah, and I'm, I'm excited about simulation, so let's go ahead and take a look. The next time you start a simulation, you'll find it hard to miss the two new study types, thermal and thermal stress. These studies will give you information about your designs in terms of their thermal characteristics and whether those can cause stress. In this example, I'm concerned with the heat dissipation in this brake assembly, so let's see how to analyze this and ensure our designs are optimized. After selecting the study type, I'll go about setting this up in a similar way as you'd set up a static stress study, defining materials, loads, then using things like automatic contacts in our degree of freedom plot before meshing and solving. Loads in this case are things like temperatures, surface heat, convection, radiation, which act to both add or remove heat from the system. In this case, we'll use a surface heat load to apply the heat from the brake pads and convection to carry heat away from the system. Once the setup is done and simulation run, we can post-process the results. Using our new Point Probe tool will enable us to pull information from our results at any location. All that is needed is to drop the point, then use the manipulators to drag it to different areas of interest. Let's jump into another example to see the other new post-processing tools. Here I'm looking at some stress results on a pipe wrench. In this case, I'm interested in seeing stress going through the center of this model. To do this, I'm going to use a new tool, a slicing plane. All I need to do is select the tool, orient it with the planar face or plane, then use the manipulator to slide or rotate it into position. I can combine multiple slicing planes or combine it with surface probes, the other new post-processing tool. This, as you can see, will enable me to probe multiple points along the surface. And they'll remain visible and dynamically update to reflect the results I'm currently showing, whether that's stress, displacement, strain. This makes it easy to gain the information I need to make the next design decisions. In the January update of Fusion 360, we have enhanced the offset feature while sketching. Now the offset will be associated to the entity that is selected. For example, we want to create a phone case for this iPhone. When in a sketch, we can select other sketch entities or edges to offset. We can use the slider or key in a distance to offset from a selected entity. In the latest update, this distance will remain if any design changes are made that would affect the referenced entity. Let's say now that we want to make the change to the size of our iPhone. We can use the parametric nature of Fusion 360 and change a parameter. Notice that the phone case extrusion will always respect the 1.5 millimeter offset. This associative offset will help any designer make parametric design changes anywhere in the design process, especially while using the top-down design approach. Now, let's jump to the sculpting workspace. When manipulating a freeform body, some faces and edges near the selected entity would be moved as well to retain the curvature continuous nature of a T-spline body. In this release, we have introduced the freeze feature. This feature will freeze faces and edges to prevent accidental changes. Notice when the faces are selected, we get a visual representation of the frozen faces and edges on the model. Don't worry, if you want to move these faces later, we can always choose to unfreeze. Now, let's apply appearance to this body. Notice I'm still in the sculpt workspace. In the last release of Fusion 360, we added a 3D wood appearance. This is a procedural appearance, and in this release, we have added texture mapping support for procedural appearances to freeform bodies. As I use the edit form command to manipulate this body, you will notice that the appearance will change. Imagine I had a block of cherry wood and cut at it. As I remove material, it will change where the grain goes. Fusion 360 can map this behavior as the T-spline body is manipulated. Another advancement we have made to help visualize your design is to scene environments. The scene settings tool is now formatted similar to the appearance tool. We have added new scenes available for download. To apply, simply drag and drop into the viewport. Then we could use other tools like flatten ground and we can move the scene to fit our design. In the January update, we have added several key enhancements involved around collaboration. Using A360, we can view files in a web browser. This tool is great for both CAD users and non-CAD personnel to collaborate during the design process. In the viewer, we have added the ability to measure. This will measure the distance between the selected entities and the distance along the X, Y, and Z axes. One of the most requested enhancements from the idea station is the ability to redline. 
Redlining is an instrumental part of the design process, which usually happens between multiple stakeholders' email threads. Now with A360, we can use the markup capabilities to suggest design changes. This will be stored as a comment and will travel with the file. In addition to redlining, we have also added object and point commenting. These type of comments will produce a balloon that will point to the selected object or point. Of course, when the balloon or comment is selected, the viewer will move to the orientation when the comment was made. These enhancements will help any design team collaborate more effectively and help audit why design changes were made throughout the design process. Wow, I can't believe we're bringing thermal studies to the simulation workspace. Yeah. And then you could transfer that study to a thermal stress study and truly see how your design reacts with thermal loads and physical loads. Pretty awesome. Yeah, and uh, documenting design changes with red lines is going to make collaboration so much easier. That's going to be a game changer. Hey, but thanks for watching. Go ahead and check out our YouTube channel. We have some quick tips always up there every week. Make sure to follow us on Twitter. We love hearing from you. Have a great week, everyone.